All right. It is 501, July 25th, 2022. We'll call to order the Committee of the Whole Agenda Meeting. Start off with appearances. Committee. We're to administrative updates. I have nothing to do with the Nothing, but we have the uh, police chief here to give us a quick update on the uh, call checks. I remember this time. Uh, good evening, everyone. Yeah, just a quick quick update on tall ships. Uh, ten days. We're ten days away. Um, I guess it's, uh, if you saw the Two Arbors Police Department uh, Facebook post, our latest one in regards to tall ships. Um, and then the mailer that's going out from City Hall, that's what I'll, I guess, be updating you on. Um, as I said from the beginning, uh, planning for a safe and successful festival has always been our number one goal at the Torvers Police Department. Um, <clears throat> how will things look, I guess, in the community? If you're in need of help or have a complaint, um, certainly we are encouraging people to dial 911 if they have an emergency. And for non-emergencies, uh, just requiring them to call or asking them to call the police department, 834-5566, or Lake County Dispatch, 8385, so 834-8385 for that number. Um, if, you have, if people have a festival-related complaint or concern, those calls will be transferred to, um, I guess, what I'll call the Tactical Dispatch, Dispatch Center, and those calls will go out to um, the officers out in the field. <clears throat> if somebody is a victim of a crime, wants to report a crime, or just needs help or a call back from an officer, those will be handled by the regular Lake County Sheriff's Dispatch. Um, there might be some calls that get crossed up, but the Two Harbors Police Department, um, we might not be the first officers to respond to a crime, um, but we will investigate all crimes that happen in our community. Uh, Release of information is going to be another big thing um, that happens throughout the festival. And uh, all those rele release of informations uh, will be approved by, um, by myself, who will be the incident commander for the festival. Um, and those, if approved tonight, will be disseminated um, by the public information officer um, to various media outlets. Uh, all that are necessary and appropriate. Uh, quite an extensive list that the lady um, that we are, I guess, requesting to bring on um, has. Um, so I'm, I know that other media outlets um, are going to be releasing their own updates as it comes to traffic and parking, but all official ones will come go through the Incident Command Center. Um, just interrupt at any time if somebody has a question. Parking. I think uh, a lot of people saw the parking map um, that was released. Uh, the good thing about uh, being a police officer or a peace officer is that we have to adapt fairly quickly. So that's really that high level. This is what we'll do. Um, and if it's necessary, we'll make some changes. But we did meet with Jim Gilbert from Public Works today about no parking signage throughout the community. Um, and they are prepared to, to start, I think, next Monday. Um, getting those staked into the ground so we're prepared and ready for all of that. And then getting certainly uh, Highway 61 corridor and then Highway or Highway 2 ready for the festival. Um, temporary handicap parking has been identified down by the community center um, on the south side of that parking lot. Uh, Jim Gilbert's going to handle signing that as well. And then if you look at the community center to the west, those eight or nine parking spots will also be temporary handicap of uh, parking. Um, encouraging residents um, and visitors to utilize off-street parking when available. We all know that we do have some blocks that don't have off-street parking. Um, and we have fielded several phone calls throughout the week about what do I do, what do I do? And we're answering those as they come in. So things have been good. Um, traffic. Of course, we should anticipate increased traffic in and around town. I think we can all know that, right? There will be extra signage, but we're asking people to slow down, pay attention. I think it'll be much like a construction zone that we're driving through. So we all know that we all love that. So a lot of orange around, um, but, but we'll be good. 
Uh, road closures will exist on our streets and avenues in limited locations, um, with most of the closures being along that Highway 61 corridor. Um, and we've worked in conjunction with MnDOT uh, to ensure safe uh, traffic flows on the corridor. There's no one-way traffic lanes are being planned. Maybe we have to move and shift to that. I don't see it happening, but we certainly could. Then one of the big questions, is there one-way traffic? There is not one-way traffic planned at this time. Um, there is a designated bus route uh, that has been established uh, from the parking areas. Uh, that drop-off will be right over uh, by the senior center over there. Provides a pretty safe place for, for everyone to get off the bus and get into the festival or up and into um, South of Seventh Avenue here. So, the nice centralized location stoplights, um, stoplights along 61, um, they're going to operate as normal. A lot of people thought they were going to be flashing red. That is not the case. There will be no flashing red lights planned at this time. Certainly, it is something we could do if need be. But there will be a law enforcement officer uh, stationed at four of the traffic lights along the corridor. Uh, the first one being the quick trip, we'll call it. The second one, uh, the liquor store. Then the Dairy Queen intersection. And then the one at Holiday uh, East. We do have within our plan that we could mobilize somebody to go up to the Culver's stoplight if need be. Um, but really, uh, the plan is to let those lights do their work and see where the things go. <clears throat> and will allow each of the officers to use their discretion on do I need to start moving traffic along, what do I have to do? So <clears throat> we'll see how that goes. Uh, the boat launch, another big question. Uh, public water access at Pega Bay, as we all know, will remain open. There's approximately 32 uh, parking spots down there for, for boats and trailers. We are still working on overflow parking um, for other boaters at this time. We have some sites identified and hopefully they're finalized here um, very soon. Um, police officers from Two Harbors, along with law enforcement officers from other agencies in northeastern Minnesota, they're all from northeastern Minnesota, um, will be present in our community <coughs> to ensure safety, respond to festival related complaints, and other calls for service. Um, I think it'll be more, more law enforcement than we've seen, but as we plan and prepare, we have to prepare for the worst. Um, hopefully that doesn't happen. Um, so that's where we are. Um, and like I said, that a law enforcement officer from a different agency may be the first one to get there, but we will investigate all of the crimes that happen within our community. Um, it's been a lot of work. Um, still continues to today. A lot of things to consider. I've learned a lot. I think we all have. Um, not a chapter I thought I would have in my book, but uh, 10 days, here we are. So, any questions? I can speak to the public information officer if you'd like within, the, within your packet if you want. Um, Chief Morganson, I just had one question. When you talk about other um, officers from other law enforcement departments within the area, will they be in their um, particular city or county uniform then? so that we, they're easily identified? How will we know who's responding to a call? Sure. The letter that we sent out to the, the chiefs and sheriffs, or whoever got the letter, the commander, we asked that they dress in a appropriate uniform attire that would be acceptable for something of this scale in their community. So we should not see flip flops and shorts. That would just not be acceptable. They will also have their own um, squad cars, some of them marked, some of them not. Many of them will bring, be bringing in um, their own side-by-side -side units and ATVs um, for us to keep some of those costs out. They've been very generous with, with all of that stuff. So. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions? Any canine units? Well, Lake County certainly has one canine unit um, available. But uh, there are a, a bomb detection dog, and, uh, explosive ordnance device um, officers that will be coming here uh, at various times to do sweeps of the, the festival site and, and other locations. That, uh, so all part of the requirements for, for this event, yes, they have been secured.
appreciate the Thank you all. Thank you. <coughs> Any other administrative updates? Go on to attorney updates. Um, let's see. We have uh, on the agenda tonight a purchase agreement for that land up by Culver's that uh, is a goal. The only thing I will tell you is, um, for whatever reason, when this lot was developed, there was not an easement provided to access in front of Culver's to access this parcel. So I've talked to the Culver's owners. Uh, we have a handshake agreement. They're going to be willing to grant us an easement. We're going to grant them an easement so that there's a road that goes in front there that comes out to 61. So everybody can drive on that. Um, I talked to the engineer today, Joe's on the phone. We're going to get the sur his survey out there, get that survey, get those easements signed. Uh, but the purchase agreement is ready to go. As soon as that's signed uh, by you, it should be signed by the seller within the next couple of days. I'll order some title insurance and we can close as soon as I get a title insurance deal. Um, any questions on that? Pretty straightforward deal. It's just a land purchase. There's nothing to check about it. Um, also before you tonight is that Tall Ships or Festival of Sale Agreement. You'll see there are two options there. One is an alcohol option, one is a no alcohol option. Um, it's, a, it's a policy question for you. There is no legal issue whether we do or do not allow alcohol sales. It's, it's up to you to decide if you want to do that. Uh, there was some conversation initially when we met with the DNR. They did not want to have alcohol sales on their property. Uh, but my understanding is they don't care if it's sold on city property, they just don't want to be a sale responsible person. So the question for you is, does the city issue a permit for the sale of liquor or beer uh, to the festival of sale people? I have two forms of an agreement on that for you to decide. Um, Briefly, THDF, we haven't talked about that in a while, but we did have a meeting last week. That That is moving forward with the separation from the city. It's taken them a while to get their board in place and to get a bookkeeper in place. I think we're hopefully within days of getting a bookkeeper done. And by the next meeting, a month from now, I should have all the documents for this council to also approve to separate that let it go be its own development fund as a nonprofit, which all of the development funds in northeastern Minnesota are. Uh, there was also, I also did some code revisions that were sent to public affairs about committee membership, committee appointments, all that stuff is drafted. There was also a city council public speaking policy that I drafted. So whenever public affairs meets again, that can be approved and sent to the council, but I understand that was canceled last week, so we're probably in the month out when I got that stuff done. I think that's all I have. Last week, you mentioned that you were going to reach out to the DNR and make sure that they were okay with us allowing sales oh, on our Yeah, property. I spoke to Phil Lepper's Edge okay. this morning. Okay. He said they have no problem whatsoever with that. It just can't be sold on DNR property. And I believe that's there's something with the state law about that. Okay. Yeah. So, um, what I can say about that from my own experience is that the council has authorized liquor sales on city property in the past. Um, we had that in the G Festival down there before. We have also had Kayak Festival on Burlington Bay, where the campground lots are now, but that was before that expansion over there. Um, the city authorizes liquor sales. On the streets, when um, uh, Castle Danger has their anniversary party during Heritage Days, um, they have in the past, not necessarily this last year, but a couple. Years in the past, the curling club used to purchase a license and sell there. Um, I don't, 
I don't really necessarily have an opinion. It's, it's up to the council to decide whether or not, um, yeah, yeah, when or fall like they have in the past. Um, so There's no legal issue there. I mean, we have an indemnification agreement. They have a caterer's license. So the liability aspect doesn't give me any heartburn. Yeah, I'm less concerned about the liability than I am. This is going to be someone who already has an approved liquor license within the city limits who's going to ask for that extra off-site permit. Is that? It is a caterer's permit. And in those situations, you do not need a license from the city. But since it's city property, you need permission and we'll need a copy of their um, certificate of, of liability insurance, which they've assured me that they can provide. So we also close every night at 6 o'clock. We don't have a huge drinking audience, but mom and dad do like to have a craft beer while the kids are playing. <laughs> so where will this happen physically? So there's a, 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 a place, um, a beer garden that would be in Van Hoven Park. Um, for the festival, it would be gated, and there would be another one over on the green space adjacent to the lighthouse, but it would not be on DNR property. They will both be gated um, beer gardens with a fence with signing saying where alcohol cannot go, and we'll have a security person at each location checking IDs. Thank and you. I also just to clarify it is Blackwoods that does this. I don't have a horse in the alcohol race. I don't get any money from it, don't want any money from it, but it is nice, a nice amenity for us to offer at the event, and we have at all the other events we've had before. So. Thanks for the clarification. Oh, sure, and just one, one more thing. That is a, that is another requirement of the city. When when they serve alcohol on city property, we've required them to do fencing and have some security there, and so that's standard. Great. All right. Any other questions? Okay. We'll go to uh, City Clerk and HR updates. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, just one particular issue then tonight, in addition to the alcohol and the tall ships. Um, just the appointment of a couple more election judges, and that's Tara Whitliff and Mickey McGilligan. And I still might have another one or two, because I've had somebody cancel this just this today. So, um, But we have time on the meeting, so we'll be good. Do you have to be certified to be an election judge? Yes, you do, but you can take that training online now, and so it's just a matter of um, you know, doing that online, of course. So someone who isn't currently one by the time yes. we have a quick yes. No other city clerk or HR updates? Okay, thank you. Finance Director updates. Thank you, Council President. Um, I do have an uh, um, amendment to the agenda to add for new business item. That it would be seven or eight? Seven. 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 Um, for authorizing the purchase and delivery of golf course maintenance equipment for approximately 140000 So this was previously approved in um, January of 2022. We were going to do a five-year lease term and it really doesn't make sense to do it. So this is just authorizing to cancel um, the five-year lease. You know, the capital equipment fund, we have really built that up over the years. I believe our goal was about having a $500,000 cushion. We have well over that. So um, to save ourselves about $20,000 in interest, um, that's why we just have this on there for your approval. What was the uh, amount on that again? Um, it's one hundred and thirty nine thousand seven hundred and twenty one dollars and thirty three cents. One hundred and thirty nine thousand seven twenty one thirty three. Mr. Chair, thanks. I had one more, or two more things actually. I, I needed to add to the consent agenda the approval of minutes from the June twentieth special meeting. Um, so that's just under consent agenda, not another set of meetings. And then um, also add to consent agenda number 15, accepting the proposal of the Union Brothers to provide the two minutes hatching services for an amount of $14,317. And I put those, all of those on your desks. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other finance director updates? I don't have anything. Thank you. Community okay, <clears throat> development planner updates. Um, is that Joel? No, that would be you, Jennifer. Okay. Would be who? Jennifer. 
Madison's room. Oh, I don't see her. Okay. okay. City engineer updates. <clears throat> oh, hold on. Try that. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Okay, there we go. Hi, good evening. Good to see you all. Um, not much business on my agenda, uh, engineering items for your agenda this evening. Um, we've got consent agenda number six, which is the most recent pay request on the 2021-2022 street project uh, that covered through July 13th, and the amount is $149,095.39, which is submitted for your consideration. Um, and just a brief update on where they're at construction-wise, which is under communication number one. Um, as of this afternoon, uh, all the paving is done, all the concrete work is done. Uh, the only items left of significant note uh, is they need to adjust the manholes to get them up to the final street grades, and then they need to come in and uh, put the black dirt in the boulevards and get the uh, boulevard restoration taken care of. And they are scheduled to do both of those items yet this week. So by next week, the project should be pretty well uh, substantially complete. Um, and that's right in line with their schedule. Substantial completion date was supposed to be August 1st, which is next Monday. So things are uh, falling right into place on the schedule there. Uh, as far as the pay request, I just want to note there is um, some of the items for the change order number seven, which was for the Minnehaha School Elementary uh, sewer service that we had talked about well, probably a month or six weeks ago. Um, good news is the internal plumbing that is done, and it looks like it has come in uh, under the quarter the amount. The actual time and material spent was less than what we'd estimated. So it looks like there will be a, a hopefully a, a cost savings on that change order from what the anticipated amount was. Um, a portion of that change order is on payment tonight. We should have the rest of the information uh, to pay off the balance of that change order next week. So we'll know for sure if it came in under budget. Um, and the other item of note is uh, Lake County has added another change order to the contract, change order number eight. Uh, that a copy of that's included with your memo and your packet. The good news is that does not involve the city at all. That is 100% um, county funds. It was for some additional sidewalk work that they wanted done on 4th Avenue east of 7th Street. So it's just included um, in your memo for uh, sake of completeness since we're part of the contract, just so that you know all the change orders are being added. But that one has zero dollar impact on the city. So I'll stop there and see if you have any questions on the 2021-2022 street project. Okay, and just a couple of other quick updates. Um, the 2023-2024 street project, we did have the open house meeting last Thursday night uh, at the County Law Enforcement Center. Um, had probably about 89 people from the public that showed up. Uh, so we, we talked with them. Most of them were from 6th Avenue. And pretty much the usual questions, you know, how was access maintained during construction? Um, what are the estimated assessments amount? How are they paid? Uh, you know, uh, all that kind of stuff. You know, will water be shut off periodically during the project? So fairly routine questions that we were able to address them all pretty well, I think, at the open house. Um, we did let them know that we will be having our formal public hearing once the feasibility report's done, and uh, we're targeting September for that. So we told them that we'd be getting a formal notice for that public hearing. Um, once that time and date has been set, and they're certainly welcome to come to City Hall and get uh, updated information, and we'll have the actual estimated assessments at that time. So that open house meeting went pretty well. Uh, the only other thing of note is that, as the attorney noted, uh, he and I talked today about the parcel for the liquor store, and uh, we, we talked through the easement that's needed for the reciprocal access. And so we are going to get started um, working on that, getting that sketch and description, the legal description put together so the attorney can draw up the agreement for that. So that is the end of my report. Um, I'd be glad to answer any questions if you have them. Any questions for a city engineer? Seeing none, I think we're good. Thanks, Joe. Very good. You're welcome. Are there any other agenda questions or additions? <clears throat> if not, seeing none, I look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? We are adjourned.